Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's and Mariana's Coffee. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sakura Kohalstead. And I'm Dan Shore. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. From a two-paper town to a one-paper town, a 30-year source of news is shutting down. Also tonight, early voting kicks off in the NMI with just a few days of vote collecting before next Tuesday. And local businesses cope with high costs, low visitor counts, and construction. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. When driving this Halloween, be cautious for trick-or-treaters and other pedestrians on the roads. Drive slowly and stay alert. Let this Halloween be a safe and memorable experience for all families in the CNMI. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the CNMI Department of Public Safety. Happy Halloween! We can't wait to welcome you back. Beginning October 16th, the doors of Miyako will reopen. Alongside the tranquil ocean and vibrant gardens inside the former Hyatt, Miyako will offer two weekday seatings for a special Japanese lunch buffet. Make your reservations Monday through Friday by calling 670-488-1000 and indulge in authentic dishes, including fresh, never frozen salmon and tuna. Make new memories at an old favorite Make it special. Make it Miyako. Our new McDonald's Spicy Chicken McNuggets are just the right amount of spicy. A small to medium Sprite kind of spicy. Uh, let's get a McFlurry after this kind of spicy. But if you get the mighty hot sauce, it's a napkins up for foreheads now kind of spicy. Uh, this came from McDonald's kind of spicy? Because our spicy chicken McNuggets, breaded in tempura and made with cayenne, are just the right amount of spicy. Unless you remember what I said about the sauce. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Half a day to Rawami and good evening, Commonwealth. You're watching the Channel 2 News on October 30th from our studio on Capitol Hill. The Saipan Tribune newspaper and website will stop the presses for good at the end of this calendar year. The company informed employees of the decision this week. In a release, the Tribune owners say that advancements in technology coupled with challenging local economic conditions have thwarted their best efforts to sustain the business and they will seize operations on December the 31st. The Tribune was founded in 1990 by UMDA and DHL founder Larry Hillbloom along with Mark Pangalinen. Hillbloom was involved in local politics and started the newspaper along with Mariana's Cablevision. In 1993, Pacific Publication and Printing was obtained by Tan Holdings and has been in constant circulation for 30 years. 
At one point, it was printed seven days a week. The NMI now goes from a two-paper town to a one-paper town. John Gonzalez. It's symptomatic of the depressed economy that we're in. Um, if there is no solid economic base, then everybody suffers one by one. Uh, and this latest uh, sad, regretful announcement by the Saipan Tribune, an institution, an icon for public, for the fourth estate, right, to keep our people informed, uh, is shutting down. I mean, what's next? Who's next? In uncertain times, the only thing that is certain is the inevitable change will occur. Marissa Flores. Maybe it's time that they, as business people, you know, you usually cut off what is not profitable. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, but we also have to give um, credit to a lot of our young independent journalists that really take uh, advantage of going out there and expressing their thought on how um, our community is being run, be it through the government, be it through leadership. Um, this is, it's their time to have their point of view and we should respect that. And maybe we'll have more um, uh, individuals coming out, exercising their um, freedoms and be journalists, be it through you know, whatever work they want to do that to get the message out. And while one closes, another door might open. The CNMI Society of Professional Journalists spokesperson, Tomas Manglonia, wrote, With the Tribune gone, we lose not just a source of news, but a partner in fostering dialogue about the challenges we face and the changes we wish to see. A police officer arrested for pointing a gun at a suspect in the back of a patrol car was back in court today for a preliminary hearing. 28-year-old Troy Anthony Manahani, a law enforcement officer, was arrested for assault with a dangerous weapon and disturbing the peace. Police believe Manahani unholstered his police-issued firearm and pointed it at a suspect while responding to a domestic violence incident in Chalankonoa on January of this year. After attempting to elude the officers during a domestic abuse stop, the accuser claims that after Officer Manahani had him safely in the back of a police vehicle, Manahani pointed his gun at him, causing him to fear for his life. The internal investigation was a long one. Ten months later, a warrant was issued for the officer's arrest. Today, a preliminary hearing was held. Sergeant Jeffrey Norita was brought up to the stand. Chester Hines, representing the CNMI, and Robert Torres, representing Manahani, cross-examined Norita. Narita said three interviews were conducted for Manahani's partner, and although his partner did not fully disclose details of the incident in the beginning, in an interview in April, Manahani's partner recounted seeing the firearm being pointed at the accuser. Count two, disturbing the peace, the court ruled for probable cause, and count one for assault with dangerous weapon, element of threat, was dismissed. Currently, Manahani is suspended from DPS and is under house arrest. Bond is set at $10,000. The Korean child who was unresponsive after being pulled out of a swimming pool at the Kensington Hotel is being transported back to Korea. Police say the incident happened on Sunday afternoon at the Kensington Resort. A five-year-old boy visiting Saipan from Korea was pulled out of the pool after being found unconscious. Lifeguards initiated CPR, and the police say the victim regained his breath but remained unconscious and was transported to the Commonwealth Health Center. Today, police say, although there are indications of improvement, the boy is still unconscious. The five-year-old boy is being medically transported back to Korea tonight. Dwindling visitor arrivals translate throughout the local economy. Tonight, we head into Garapan and visit a local restaurant trying to stay open. Gone are Bubba Gump's, Tony Roma's, International House of Pancakes, and Capriciosa. Local restaurants, even those with big names, have had a tough go of it. Pacific Sunrise Corporation was founded in 1995 and established Garapan Restaurant in 2012. Restaurant owner Gracia Yu says the local community has been a key part to staying afloat. To be very honest, 
we're really grateful with the local the local market that we have. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have you know like survived until this long. And whether it's like whether the island's like completely out of money or not, like they still do come back and they support us. And they say, yeah, we try to come back at least once a week. You know, so and we try to you know rotate different restaurants at least once a week. You know, like so we can help them or whatever. I'm really grateful for people, um, you know, customers like that, and because of customers like that, we are still surviving. Head chef and operations manager Ken Tanzawa says business was better when people had government assistance during the pandemic. You know, people coming out and eating more and definitely helping the business. But um, once that money is out, everybody's just back to staying home and you know not eating out and you know, pretty much trying to save money. One of their current challenges is construction. Customers have expressed their difficulty in navigating to the restaurant. They don't have the luxury to, oh, okay, let's find a, you know, we go through a maze a today. So we have lost a lot of, you know, customers. And they tell us straight up, like, we can't park. You know, we, we, we can't find a way to your restaurant. So we ended up going to, you know, the easiest one that they can go to, you know. You and Tanzawa say construction itself is not an issue, but not knowing what to expect has become a daily challenge. You know, we're just asking for communication. We're not asking for... Can you do this for us? Can you do that for us? You know, we're not asking for special treatment. All we're saying is we just need to know what the plan is, when it's going to end, you know, or what we have to do on our end for you to proceed, you know, or make it faster. But none of that has been happening. So it's just very miscommunication, no mm. information. I really think it's just our number one thing on the island right now is just miscommunication. It's just like we just need everybody to communicate a little bit better. Like she said, we're not asking for anything crazy like get it done tomorrow. You know, we're just wondering when. So we can plan around whatever is going on because if not, then, you know, we, we were, all, we're all trying to make a living. We're all trying to plan for the future. But with all this going on, it's just very difficult, you know. Yu says visitor feedback has changed a lot from just a decade ago and a lot of it is disheartening. It's, it's different when you see um, the type of tourism that we used to get 10 years ago and the type of tourism that we're getting now. Definitely different. And we see that the more, like, on, like from personal experience, being on the plane, leaving, some t like majority of the tourists are like so happy that they're leaving. They're saying there's nothing to do there. I'm just so happy I'm coming back home. I would have rather taken Asiana if I had a choice. Why is it, you know, this? Why is it that? You know, they, it's, it's just majority complaining in the plane. They're complaining in Korean. And I'm so sad, you know, this isn't what we want to portray, you know, our island as. And it was never like this. But the more and more, if we don't put back what we make to improve the island, it's really just going to die out. Much of the Korean tour business is controlled by a handful of operators. And Tanzawa says while that can pose small business challenges, it can also have some benefits. To be honest, we need bigger companies like that to come in and kind of do something, you know, like open up a new coffee shop or open up a new hotel. or Because our main problem with most of the tourists, I, I, from my understanding is that there's nothing to do on Saipan, mm. even if they come here. There's nowhere, you know, to, even there's no clubs, you know, for younger kids and generation, there's no Manigaha's kind of, you know, deteriorating. I mean, that's our only marine sports. I mean, just, just a whole lot of, so um, I, I appreciate the bigger companies coming in and trying to make the island better and, you know, um, I wish there was a better way that we can kind of share the tours, but at the Work same time, together. yeah. Last year, Garp and Restaurant closed down their sister restaurant, Salty's, and merged the two menus. Owning a small business holds great responsibility. We've thought about, you know, like, just why not close, you know, like, like everybody else. But, you know, we have, we just think of our customers, like, we have a lot of, um, Monamkus that come here and you know they they, they they leave happy they're grateful and they're they always say thank you you know the food was so great so it's, it's hard for us to close when we got people like that coming back and you know like just enjoying the food that's all you know pretty much and of course our staff you know getting business back to what it used to be has been an uphill battle 
Yu and Tanzawa hold out hope that an increase in arrivals will help the island overall. More population any, in any way or now I think would just be any better than what we have right now. Whether it's tourism or military or whatever the case, I just think we need more population back Some on the people, island. Yeah. yeah, that's all we need and I think you know we can get the ball rolling. Coming up, do we really know what's in our food? What could the presence of lead lead to? <laughs> and in our favorite weekly segment, Welcome to Saipan. He is probably not an outlaw, but he is definitely a hood. Stay with us. That goes with your flow. Get unlimited local talk, text, and data at the most affordable rate with unlimited flow postpaid. If you're a person with a disability in the CNMI, you have certain rights that protect your ability to vote. This video contains some information about your rights and some resources available to you in protecting those rights. What are some of your voting rights as a person with a disability? You have the right to vote regardless of your disability. You have the right to cast your vote privately without disclosing your vote to anyone. But you also have the right to ask for assistance as needed. Polling place workers should be ready and available to assist and accommodate your needs. CNMI law requires that you must be registered to vote in the CNMI. You can vote if you are a citizen or national of the United States, at least 18 years of age on the date of the election, domiciled in the CNMI, a resident of the CNMI, and have resided in the Commonwealth for 120 days, are not serving a sentence for a felony, have not been declared by the court of unsound mind, and have registered to vote at least 60 days before the election. As a voter with a disability, you have the right to vote in an accessible voting place. That means you can get from your car through the door to cash your ballot, without physical barriers or impediments. Under the CNMI law, any voter who needs help in casting a ballot is entitled to request for assistance. A poll supervisor or the executive director of the Commonwealth Election Commission can provide assistance at the polling place, or you can exercise your right to curbside vote. However, whether you vote at curbside or not is your choice. No poll worker can force you to vote curbside. If you are unable to mark your ballot, you may select up to two people to help you cast your vote, except that they cannot be your employer or your employer's agent. The Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 requires public entities to provide progress access, reasonable modification of policy, auxiliary aids and service where necessary, to afford an individual with a disability an equal opportunity to participate in and enjoy the benefits of the services, program, or activity being conducted by the public entity. Our primary goal is to have 100% participation of eligible voters in all elections, 100% polling place accessibility, and options for all voters who seek independent and private voting. If you want to know more about your voting rights, please contact the Northern Marianas Protection and Advocacy Systems Incorporated at 670-235-7273 or 74. Or you can simply visit our website at www.nmposse.org. This video was brought to you by the Administration for Community Living and does not necessarily reflect their official views. King is back like prodigal. I bingo. I gave him time. It's been I never politic. If I want it, I'ma get mine. Never fake the funk. Can't perform for your empire. Snatch him out the throne. Make them all fall in line. I let the clock tick. Count down. Cause I'm on the headline. The deadline. I'm a head time. The rare kind. I'm a living legend. Lethal weapon.
premium office space is available now at the Hermosa Vista Business Park on Capitol Hill. Features include dedicated parking, fast internet, backup power, good water, and natural light throughout to go along with the very best views on Saipan. So don't settle for space when you can get peace and peace of mind. Call Hermosa Vista today at 670-483-4750 or email hvsaipan at gmail.com. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at Welcome back. It's day two of early voting. Let's take a look. It's been sunny for the first two days of early voting. Voters have taken advantage of early voting down at the multipurpose center. Dora DeSena expresses the importance of voting and explains the process. I just want to tell the people to come and vote. I think it's time for all of us, the community, the CNMI, to come and vote. So when you go inside, what did you have to do? Uh, just fill out a form after that, go in, and then, then you start voting. It's easy. Marcelino B. Ogun also veiled to coming in before Election Day. I do early voting because I'm very busy all the way now. Because I, I hope also that they do the right thing, good thing for the public. That's when I want to know that they're doing the good thing for what the requesting for the public to do all the community. Uh, and all the quality for the island of Saipan. We we'll need more tourists in this island. Since election day is on a Tuesday, which is a working day for most, Michael Camacho and Arian Antonio used the nice weather to their advantage and didn't miss their chance to vote. Early voting is good because, you know, sometimes on election day we can get like really busy and, you know, sometimes we don't have the time to go. So, you know, we're, we're both day off today from work, so we came here to, to get over with. It's also a great advantage to do early voting on this day, actually. Is there anything else um, you want to tell people about um, the process? Like, how was it? Don't overthink it. It's pretty quick and easy, so go vote. Yeah. You? Same thing with <laughs> Vote. Make sure you vote. Curbside voting for elderly and disabled voters is also available. Five more days of early voting from now until November 4th between 8.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the Multipurpose Center in Saipan. Election day is November 5th. Good food is good medicine, but some food, even food you think might be good for you, can introduce harmful metals and chemicals into the body. Let's take a look at the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15 and take a look at some good practices with local diets. Our Chris Nelson reports. Some new videos have been released that give Western Pacific communities some new resources in making food choices. Spinach, strawberries, nectarines, peaches, blueberries, kale, apples, and green beans, all on the dirty dozen list for non-organic fruits and vegetables. 
as they can have traces of pesticides and chemicals. If you love these items, it can be worth paying the higher price for the organic versions. Dr. Stephanie Holm from the University of California at San Francisco says one of the best things you can do as a parent is to have your kids eat a wide variety of foods. In general, um, arsenic, for example, uh, is pretty high in rice products um, and in apple juices. Um, apple products generally, but but particularly the like juices and, and more processed things. Um, and so that's a good example of one where uh, you know, if you have a kid that eats a lot of rice, maybe because that's an important part of your family's cultural heritage, or maybe they're on a gluten-free diet or, you know, all kinds of different reasons, um, that's a reason to make sure that they're not just having rice every day, that you're sort of mixing around with the different kinds of options that they can eat. Where do these heavy metals come from? But a lot of it's soil. So a lot of it is that there's heavy metals in the soil that then gets into um, produce and, and then can end up in food. In some cases, so the... Um, cinnamon issue last year, uh, powdered spices um, can end up uh, being contaminated with heavy metals, partially because those heavy metals are literally heavy. Um, and so then they they make the spice or whatever powdered thing you're buying heavier. Home says it's also best to avoid heavily processed foods and to wash and peel fruits and vegetables and avoid cooking and storing food in plastic containers. The biggest one that people tend to know, especially for lead, is related to the brain and related to learning, right? That um, kids who have higher exposure to um, lead tend to have uh, more problems with learning and, and brain development as they get older. Arsenic can lead to bladder and stomach problems. Locally, some of our heavy metals in food can come from our ocean resources. James Nolan visited the Mariana Islands and helped make some of the creative decisions in the new animated videos. We were looking more at the, the uptake of the information itself and what kind of um, materials we should create using what languages, what contexts, um, the kind of vocabulary, the kind of images that we're going to design. Um, but you're spot on there, Chris. Um, the seafood was a big thing that came up a lot. The simple rule of thumb is that you want to avoid having fish that are predator fish. So fish that eat smaller fish are more likely to have really high mercury levels in them. So like shark, swordfish, large tuna, those all tend to have really high mercury levels. Um, whereas, uh, you know, sort of smaller uh, fish that, that don't tend to eat other fish tend to have lower. Organic food can be pricey, but there are some non-organic choices that can work for fruits and vegetables, known as the Clean 15, and on the list, carrots, avocados, onions, sweet potatoes, mangoes, papayas, pineapple, and watermelon. These are generally considered to be okay to buy the non-organic and much cheaper variety. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News. The sun is out again at Saipan International. We see who comes and goes. The weekend rain is replaced with a sunshiny day. Arrivals are in. Shari is originally from Georgia and it's her first time in Saipan. I kind of like it. Um, I kind of like to be to myself, so I enjoy the island life right about now. She serves in the U.S. Army, was recently stationed in Guam, and is here for business. Um, I guess the same thing as far as island life. Um, get a been acquainted to the community and then do what I need to do and get back home. We say welcome to Saipan and we also say goodbye or see you later to those leaving the island. JB Factor is headed to Las Vegas to study and pursue a career in hospitality management. So basically I'm looking for uh, more opportunity for me so I can uh, get a like, more better career, you know, in daily life. That's it. <laughs> He leaves his family behind and sets out for big dreams. If the God tells you to do it, and you have like a, you have a big passion for what do you want to do, just keep going, take a rest, and yeah. Dave Hood is headed out to California to check on his renewable company. His trip is unrelated to the upcoming Sheraton, but he shares some details. We have a, a, a really amazing team there, and. Uh, Everybody's excited about the opening and we're on target, so we'll see you in November. Although times are tough, there's hope and much to look forward to. I think that we have a very bright future 
we're in a little tough spot right now, but things will change. And I, I believe this island is so beautiful and the people are so awesome that this place is gonna turn around very soon. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And that's why I'm here and that's why I'm investing here is because I, I believe in this island. This week on Your Humanities Half Hour, host Catherine Perry dives deep into the subject of the Society of Professional Journalists with its president, Tomas Manglonia. The CNMI SBJ has been revived after three decades of dormancy. We revived it for three main reasons. Um, the first is to educate. Um, we often talk about how there's a lack of a workforce, lack of interest. Uh, journalism is no different from any other industry in the CNMI. Um, we too have a shortage of workers. <laughs> and so um, we hope that when, if we focus on education, visit schools, visit groups, educate them about what it means to be a journalist, the public service um, kind of motivation behind it, and really um, the joys of the job as well, that hopefully people will uh, want to become journalists. In an isolated profession, it is good to maintain a sense of journalistic camaraderie. That's one thing I love about the islands is that while there are competitive parts of the job, of course you want to get the story out right first, um, we really do work together because um, the government doesn't own the information, the news organizations don't own the information, the public owns information, um, especially that impacts their daily lives. According to SBJ, the First Amendment is first for a very good reason. The First Amendment is under attack in our nation. Um, the First Amendment, for those of you who might not know, uh, goes like this. It says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That is our First Amendment. And the freedom of the press and freedom of speech are so critical to that. Watch the episode of Humanities Half Hour in its entirety Thursday at 7 p.m. with a replay on Saturday at 7 p.m. right here on KSPN2. Motivation isn't always easy to come by. Thankfully, there's one place that continues to ignite my willpower. This one place provides me with the knowledge and support I need to grow so I can continue to become a better version of myself. This is where I discovered my passion, where I achieved successes that made me proud. It's home to where I improved my performance, seeing the opportunity in every challenge. And when doubt creeps inside and I think about giving up, I remember the heroes who've also called this place home. And just like them, I know that every last rep is always a beginning. No matter how hard it gets, nothing can stop me. I will always come back stronger because I'm part of a legacy. Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. Ten-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass, and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time, and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. Here's the weather. We are in a sweet weather cycle right now, and am I? There's only a 20% chance of showers tonight with temperatures around 77 degrees. Thursday will be the same with only a 20% chance of isolated showers, high of 87, lows of around 77. The sun has already set Saipan at 5.49 p.m. and will rise tomorrow at 6.13 a.m. And with only six sunrises left until election day, it is never too late to thank the welcoming day for the chance to run.
or walk or dance or swim. I will see you in the water or on the land. That's news and weather. Thank you for joining us. Good. You know, there was no sport, but you're a good sport. <laughs> we'll see you on Friday.